Welcome back to Open Line. Talking about should you be allowed to operate a business out of your private home? There is a lawsuit uh, filed by the two uh, men up here right now um, on behalf of homeowners who also have wanted to start a business out of their home, and Metro Code does not allow that. So they're suing Metro. Um, an interesting conversation. Let's go to Joyce on line one. Hello, Joyce. Hello. Go I just right have ahead. three quick comments, please. And I'm sorry if this uh, is something that someone already mentioned. I didn't get to see the whole show. Uh, one is that Metro already provides for home-based businesses, uh, even allowing one employee just with no signage or on-street parking. Um, secondly, um, there are a lot of incubator businesses in town that will assist startups and those who are ambitious and want to get their own business going without invading neighborhoods. And third, uh, as to the comment that noise is already in force, we just have to call Metro. I think we've already seen that excessive noise can't be enforced in, in just one kind of business, and that's short-term rentals. So I shudder to think what it would be like if we opened the door to other kinds of businesses. So you would hate to see the law change. You think the law is appropriate as it is right now? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you very much for calling in, Joyce. What do you, what do you think of Joyce's comments there? Well, she, she's right that Metro already allows home businesses to, to have one employee. Um, I, don't, I don't have much to say on the second comment, but as to the third uh, with the noise ordinances, I, I don't think there's a risk that people like Lidge, who professionally soundproofs his studio, or Pat, who's just you know, a woman cutting hair in her garage, are really going to create the kind of noise complaints that you've seen in the news here in Nashville with regard to the short-term rentals. Well, I mean, I'll echo her, her concern. We, we need more codes enforcement. Um, but the, the problem is that we're not enforcing the laws and we book on the, on the existing books. And so what we're doing instead is, is making these really clumsy laws like ones that deny Lidge and Pat the ability to support their families. So she's saying there's already a law on the books that allows for one employee and she said something about parking. Yeah, what, it, what is this law on the books and, and you know, why is that not good enough in your opinion? Yeah, so it, it, she's right, but it doesn't allow for you to see clients. Um, and that's what makes Lidge and Pat's business uh, yeah. entirely unlawful. So you could have one employee and maybe you just couldn't see clients. What, what Lidge and Pat are doing, they're having people drive there and park there. Right, and, right. And that's, that's the issue. Okay. Um, okay, interesting. Joyce, again, thanks for the call. Let's go to Pat. Hello, Pat. Uh, yeah, did you say Pat? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Hey, well... What if a neighbor offer? Well, he's not really taking customers in, but he keeps his equipment on his property, you know, like lawnmower trailer and truck and stuff. Um, is that considered operating out of your home? I'm, um, you know, you're if you have a lawn um, care type business and you keep the stuff there, is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. There's actually already a part in the Metro Code that says you can't have vehicles and such in your yard. So that's already there, and we're not suing about that. Um, all right, what, what do you think about what he said there? Um, is you, you're saying you, you can't do that? I know people do that. You well, can't have that? I, I don't know if you can or you can under the existing law. It's not important because neither of our clients are asking right. to do something like that's that. That's not what y'all are I mean, involved. I do think it highlights some of the arbitrariness of the way that the law existing works and that you can do things that are far more disruptive to the residential character, like you can have a bad neighbor that leaves bounce houses in front of your yard. That debatably does more to affect the residential character than a soundproof studio. And you said you've been talking to people all around Nashville. And, and they have a similar comment about codes. Is that right? What, what, what are you hearing when you talk about this topic? Panic uh, at first is <laughs> most people's first reaction. You know, they get a letter threatening them with $50 of fines for every day they've ever ran the home business that in many cases they've been having for years. Um, that can scare people. And so we're, we see people who are afraid first and foremost. Um, and then once they start talking about how Codes has enforced the law against them, we get the sense that Codes is a little bit confused about how they enforce. There's a different story with every homeowner we've talked to who's had this law enforced against them. A different story. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, do you feel like they're not even enforcing it unless there's a complaint? They're certainly not seeking it out. They're waiting for complaints here. Yeah, I mean, we've talked to home, we've talked to home business owners who have complaints like, I was turned in by my neighbor 
who runs a home business mm -hmm. and did not know that she too was in violation of the law and in the course of reporting me to codes Coles told her that she was in violation too and then told her you better not get complained about by your neighbor <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. With that, we're going to take a break. Uh, we'll come back, uh, wrap everything up, be back right after this.